All right, I think I've got this thing started. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, the presentation that you've arrived at here is how to find quality prospects on Google+. And so if that's not what you're looking for, then you uh, now have an opportunity to go find the right spot. But if that's the presentation that you were expecting, then you are in the right place. And we'll get started here in just a few moments. We're going to let everybody get logged in and uh, settle down here for the presentation. And then we'll get going. So this is a great time if you uh, have any last minute you know, phone call, email, need to run to the restroom, go get a drink of water, any of that kind of stuff. This is the perfect time to do it. And we'll get started in just another minute or two. Thank you. Okay, again, I see a lot of uh, people joining in here. Um, you've arrived at the presentation on how to find quality prospects on Google+. So if that's what you're looking for, you're in the right place. We're just giving people a few minutes here to get settled in, and then we'll get started. So if you have any uh, last-minute emails, phone calls, need to run to the restroom, get a drink of water, anything like that, this is a great time to do it, and we'll get started in just another minute. Thank you. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and get going. This is the presentation, How to Use Google Plus to Find Quality Prospects and Connect with People Who Need Your Products and Services. And I'm really excited about this presentation. You know, Google Plus has really come a long way and has a lot of really neat and uh, exciting features and benefits that just about every business and every professional can and should be taking advantage of. But uh, I think, you know, Google Plus is still playing that kind of second fiddle position to uh, Facebook. And so a lot of people just are not aware of some of the really cool things that you can do with Google+. Plus. So I'm excited to uh, introduce those to you. Now, before we get going here, let me just uh, address a couple of logistics things here first. Um, one, I will be recording this presentation and I will get a recording out to all of you. So no need to take real intense notes. You can relax. And uh, this information will be available to you so that you can go through it um, you know, uh, multiple times if you need to. Next, um, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, there is a box you'll see below this presentation. And you can just type in your questions there. And I will plan on addressing at least a handful of questions at the end of the presentation. And anything that I don't get to today, I will make sure that myself or somebody from my team follows up with you directly to make sure we get that, uh, answer, that question answered for you, okay? Uh, finally, um, if you actually mouse over the actual presentation on your screen, you'll see that uh, there's a little icon that pops up on the lower right-hand side of the presentation. If you click on that, you can actually expand the presentation to full screen, which just might be a better way for you to view it. And um, <clears throat> at any time, if you want to get out of that full screen mode, just hit escape 
and that will bring you back to the uh, to the view that you're currently in. All right, let me go ahead and get a drink of water here before I get going. <clears throat> All right, excuse me. Okay, here we go. So, uh, how to use Google Plus to find quality prospects and connect with people who need your products and services. So, the first question is, why Google Plus, right? You already have a lot of places that you can be spending your time and attention. You know, there's certainly there's Facebook, there's LinkedIn, um, in, in terms of just kind of these social networks. But of course, there's all the other things that you can be doing to run your business and grow your business, which I understand. So you certainly need a compelling reason to determine if Google Plus is something that you should be spending time on. So let's talk about some of those reasons. Well. Number one, we all know Google is the number one search engine in the world by far and away. They have you know huge market share compared to their competition. They truly are dominant. So we know that about Google. Um, what's interesting here, what you may not know, some of the statistics around that, Google logs 2 billion searches a day. It's amazing. I mean, when you think back just you know just a little over 10 years ago or so, we, we didn't even know what a search engine was. And now it's become just such a part of our everyday existence and how we conduct business and, and how we find the products and services and information that we're look, looking for. It really is just amazing how far it's come in that short period of time. Nearly 300 million people use Google every single day. And this is where it gets important for you in regards to Google Plus specifically. Google Plus has over 170 million registered users, and that number is actually growing very, very quickly. So again, when it comes to Google Plus specifically, it's important that you understand that Google Plus really is the future of search in Google's eyes. So you know, anytime um, Google says, hey, this is our future, this is what we're committed to, it's obviously going to benefit you if you understand why that is, what their strategy is, and how that could potentially impact your business for better or worse, okay? Now, the big directional shift that Google made was to say, hey, we understand now that social interaction is incredibly important to how people are using the internet and how people are finding you know, information and how they're getting referred to products and things like that. And for a long time, Google really did not have any of that social interaction built into its search engine. But now what Google is saying is, hey, we get it and we are going to make sure that social interaction ranks very highly in our search engines. Okay, And that's what's key is now the search engines where people go and they find information about your business and um, you, you know, your products and services and maybe even you personally – the results that they get when they search are now going to be impacted very highly by social interaction. So, you know, with Google Plus, I'm sure you've seen the plus one button where you can plus one somebody's content. Um, you can share somebody's content, you know, their photos, videos, comments, links. All of those things can be plus one and be shared now within Google, which makes it a much, much more social experience. So. The language out there is that social is the new SEO. And if you're not familiar, SEO stands for search engine optimization. It's how you make your information, your website, um, your business and products show up higher in the search engines. So Google is really, really, really focused on this, this social impact of um, how people are you know, using the internet and, and making sure that that social impact is now reflected in the search results of Google. So that, you know, for that alone, you really, really need to pay attention to what is happening with Google Plus and how that's impacting the search results. Now, Google Plus specifically, the, the social network side there, lets you find audiences and audiences that have already been aggregated and, and lets you find new ways to connect to those audiences in a very efficient way. And that's what we're going to focus on in the presentation today because there's a whole, you know, there's a whole side of, you know, getting your website, getting your products, getting your company ranked highly in the search engines that Google Plus is definitely now impacting. But there's also just the more everyday practical side that anybody can take advantage of 
in Google Plus where you can find qualified prospects that are interested in what you're doing and connect with them very easily. And I think that that's what's really, really exciting about Google Plus for most businesses. And that's what we're going to focus on today. All right. First, before you go diving into Google Plus and trying to take advantage of the strategies, taking advantage of the strategies that I'm going to share with you here today, you need to lay some groundwork. You need to make sure that you are set up properly in Google Plus before you go and try and execute on the strategies or else you're just not going to get as good a result. All right, so let's talk about some of that groundwork. The first thing is to define your target audience. I mean, who is it exactly that you're looking for? And the more detailed you can get about this, then the more um, the the easier it's going to be to find that audience within Google Plus. So, who is it that you're looking for? Are they local or national? Um, do you want the largest audience possible, or are you looking for a more specific niche? Right. These are the types of questions that you should answer about your audience. And in the process of doing so, what I recommend you do is that you actually create an avatar of your ideal prospect or customer. When I say avatar, it's essentially just like a little imaginary person. But you know what I found and what most marketers have found is that the more real you can make that person by actually you know, getting a picture of what that person looks like and, and putting them up on your wall and then really describing who that person is and what their interests are and how old they are and you know, what types of things are important to them, what they're interested in, um, what types of things are they commenting and sharing on the internet. The more that you can get inside of that person's head, the better off you're going to be in finding that person and then also creating content that is interesting for that person. Okay? So actually create a little avatar of who you think your ideal prospect is. And certainly that could be more than one person. But I think it'll really, really, really help you from a marketing perspective to get clarity on who those people are so that everybody that's working on you know, your Google Plus campaigns or even just you will, will be very focused on finding the right person. All right, once you've done that, it's time to start building your list. And that's what uh, you know, Google Plus I think is just super exciting. So you know, start with your existing contacts, whatever business cards you have, sales leads, friends, you know, Facebook and LinkedIn connections, any of those people, you want to get on Google Plus and see if you can find them in Google Plus. And in most cases, you will, right? Um, but once you've taken advantage of all those connections that you already have and you already um, have located those in Google Plus, now it's time to start using Google Plus to really grow that list. And that's where the magic happens, okay? So, Let's go ahead and move on then to how to find quality prospects with Google+. All right, first things first, you need to set up your personal profile, okay? It's really important that you get this right. You, you want to put, um, uh, you want to design your personal profile so that it attracts the target audience that you're looking for. Um, this is a great way to immediately, instantly gain influence with that audience when they come to check out your profile and they see who you are and what you're about and what types of things that you've accomplished. Now what's important here is that you make this profile as complete as possible. Google loves complete information. Okay, Again, if, if you're not real familiar with Google, their mission really is to provide um, the, the world's information in an organized way, right? To, to organize the world's information. So they want you to help them in that task. If, if you give an incomplete profile, they're not going to be satisfied with it and they're going to be less likely to show your profile to potential prospects. So you want to make sure that you fill it out as completely as possible. And just to make a note here, this is separate from your business page in Google+. Okay, You have personal profiles and you have business pages, which is effectively your business profile. They are separate and you need to do both and you should start with your personal profile. So let me just give you an example here. Somebody that's very famous, Richard Branson, entrepreneur from, uh, from England. This is his personal profile. So you can see it's got his personal picture. Um, it's got a bunch of photos you know, of him uh, doing things you know, on his boat, um, 
uh, at, you know, at a kickoff event for one of his businesses. And obviously, Richard Branson is very, very tied to the Virgin brand, right? The company that he founded. However, he is separate. And if you go and you look up Richard Branson Google Plus, you will find a separate, distinct profile for Richard Branson. Now you can see over here on the right hand side that he's obviously doing a lot to promote the Virgin brand. He set up his profile to make sure that you're going to find his Virgin brand as well, which makes sense. Um, but um, you know this is a separate profile. Okay, so you want to set up your personal profile and make it very, very complete. Okay, see how he's got pictures up here. Um, I'm sure if you click on each of these tabs, about and photos and videos, he's got all of his information really, really filled in. Okay, so next, once you've done that, then you want to create your Google Plus business page. And this is very similar in structure to your pro personal profile, except there's a handful of things that you need to know about it um, to understand why it is that you need to have both. So, one, business pages can't add people to circles. And if you don't know what circles are, we'll, we'll get to that here in just a few minutes, but you can't add people to circles until the page is added first or mentioned. So, in other words, what this is saying is that a, a business page cannot go around and make connections with individuals in Google+, unless those individuals have somehow indicated that they're interested in having that connection, okay? So you're limited in what you can do with a business page to a degree. So that's why you really want to have your personal page as well. Um, pages can have multiple administrators, which is great. So if you have multiple people in your company um, or maybe some outsourced service firm that you'd like to help you in uh, managing your Google Plus campaigns, then um, uh, it's nice because you can have those multiple people in there working on it. And pages have the plus one button as well. Um, so, uh, you know, the plus one button is, is Google's way of kind of liking things and sharing content and stuff like that. So, um, you know, there's, there's a handful of differences that you need to be aware of. And of course, a business page is for a business entity, whereas your personal page is for an individual. So here's the example using Richard Branson again. This is the Virgin page. So you can see the Virgin page. It says Virgin up here. It's got the Virgin logo real big here. Um, it's posting as a Virgin, okay? And of course, again, it's incredibly tied to Richard Branson, so you're gonna see Richard Branson all over it. However, it is a business page which is separate and distinct from Richard Branson, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to set up both. You're gonna set up your personal profile and make sure you get that really um, dialed in. And then you also want to make sure that you set up your business page and get that really dialed in as well. Now, uh, this is uh, essentially how you create a Google Plus uh, page. So it's, it's super simple. I mean, they just got a little form that you, you, know, you, you go through and fill out. So um, it, it's a very, very simple process that will just kind of lead you through um, filling in all the information you need to create your page again just make sure that you get it, uh, you know, complete um, and put as much, you know, attractive information in there about your business as possible. You want to make sure that, you know, you use photos, that you use videos. Those things are um, obviously much more intriguing than just text content. Uh, recommend that you upload at least four photos. Um, a great way to use video is to um, uh, create video tutorials. Um, you know, so if you have any sort of um, uh, products that you could create tutorials around how to use them or or why you'd want them and things like that. Those are very attractive. Um, and it's very important that you make sure on your business page to add your tagline. Okay, right down here, this add your tagline. I want to make sure that, that um, is, it really stands out to you because if you don't add your tagline, your business page, it, it may not really pop as to what that business is all about. Right, so if somebody is not real familiar with your business and you don't have a good strong tagline and they're telling them what your business is all about, then it may kind of get lost in the shuffle. So make sure that you add your tagline that very clearly says what your business is all about. All right, so let's move on here. Once you have created your uh, pages and profiles, you want to make sure that you're doing everything that you can to cross pollinate those pages and those sites to other pages and sites 
around the web um, that are yours that people may be visiting. So if you have a blog or your main website, um, if you have a Facebook page or a Facebook group or a YouTube channel, these are all great things to link your Google Plus pages and profiles to and also from, right? So you want to get them going back and forth so that if somebody lands on your YouTube channel, they have a good chance of finding your Google Plus page and vice versa. Um, the more connections that you can make with people by cross-pollinating, the more likely they are to um, kind of you know, stay within your world and receive communication from you, which of course is the, um, is the whole point, okay? So make sure and connect up with your other, um, uh, other sites, you know, blogs, Facebook pages, things like that that you have around the web. All right, number four now is once you create these pages, you want to create what's called your stream. Your stream is the, um, the content that's being posted on your page. So you see here, this content that's being posted, that's, that's known as the stream, right? It's, the, it's um, similar to Facebook's wall, if you're familiar with it. And that's where you can put um, content and effectively communicate with your audience. So obviously you wanna make sure that that stream has really relevant content that is going to be interesting to your prospects. Um, so when they find your, you know, your page, they find something that's compelling to them and they have a reason to then follow that page right up here, right? This is the goal you wanna get people to follow and to add um, you to um, you know, their circles so that they are engaging with you and receiving content from you on a regular basis. So really think through that stream, what's the kind of content that I'm going to put in there that's going to be compelling to my target audience um, and, and do your best to, to put a good amount of it in there from the very get-go so it doesn't look like you're just getting started, right? Um, you wanna show that you're actually active and, and committed to being there so that people realize it's worth their while to engage with you. All right, number five now is to create quality circles. So I mentioned circles earlier, and if you're not familiar with Google+, Plus, then you, you've, you're not uh, likely to be familiar with circles at all, but circles are what really makes Google+, Plus so, so powerful. If, if you're familiar with Facebook, you know that, um, you know, before Facebook made some changes to how you can create lists in there, um, it, it was a little bit unnerving sometimes on Facebook. You really had to think about, hey, what's the content that I'm posting and who's going to see this, right? Because it really was, if you posted anything, everybody saw it. And that could be a real problem. I mean, it, I don't know if you've ever seen, I certainly have seen, um, you know, people who go and apply for jobs and they, you know, they, of course, show up for their interview looking all professional and, you know, all pulled together for the interview. And then whoever is interviewing them takes a look at their Facebook pro profile, um, Facebook page, and sees that, you know, hey, the night before they were out doing shots at the bar and, you know, they've got some wild pictures and stuff like that. Well, obviously that's not the kind of information that you want to be communicating in the interview to your prospective employer. Well, that was the problem with Facebook is that everything was so visible, right? Well, what Google Plus did very smartly was make it easy for you to create these circles. And circles are kind of like lists. They're separate lists that you can use to communicate with in um, a nice, efficient way. So you can see here just some examples. You know, there's a family circle, a friend circle, work colleagues, um, uh, you know, people who have an interest in solar, uh, people who went to this particular uh, seminar that, you know, I went to, facilities, management experts, journalists. So th there's really no end. I mean, you can create as many circles as you want and you can get as specific as you want about who goes in those circles. But that's the beautiful thing is that you can add, you know, your work colleagues to the circle and then when you're creating and posting content in Google+, you can determine hey, do I want to share that content with my work colleagues or is this just something I'm sharing with my family and friends? It makes it very, very easy to segment how you're distributing that content. So really powerful feature of Google+. And I'm gonna show you some examples here of why it's really, really um, powerful from a prospecting perspective. Okay, so Google+, circles. Um, the way that you can start to really take advantage of these is you wanna find 
the influencers and interactors that are out there in your marketplace. Okay, and the way that you can do that is just by within Google Plus just doing searches, right? You can search for keywords to find the best and the brightest, um, and it says guys, but people in your niche. Um, so as an example, and I'll show you here in just a minute, if I wanted to find Denver dentists, okay, and that was the market that I was going after, I can just do a search inside of Google Plus for Denver dentists, and it's going to show me all of the Denver dentists that are in Google Plus. So I can very easily find those people and target them, which is just a, a really, really, really valuable, easy way of finding people to connect with, right? So you can then add those people to your circles and segment those circles accordingly, right, based on, uh, again, those very specific niches that you want to communicate to, okay? So let me just show you how that works <clears throat> in practice here. Excuse me, let me just get a drink real quick. <clears throat> okay, excuse me. So you can see here, <clears throat> inside of Google+, Plus, I did a search for Denver Dentist. Now, when you do that search, you will see uh, up and to the right a red button that says Save Search. So you can do that. You can save that search, save that search <clears throat> and then once you do, that saved search will show up in this Explore button. So if you hit that Explore button, over on the right-hand side, you will see a list of saved searches. And if I click on that saved search, Denver Dennis, it brings up um, a list of people. It actually brings up a, a, a couple of different lists, but I, I chose to zoom in on this one, of all of the Denver dentists in Google+. So you can see this Denver Dental Implants, Denver Clear Choice Dental Implant Center, Stam Dental, uh, Guy, Grabiac, Heather Stam, Landmark Dental Studio. So if I was somebody that was selling to dentists, how valuable is this? I can now just very quickly pull up this huge list of dentists inside of the Denver market that I can now, look at this, I can now follow their business pages, I can add them to my circles, right, and now start creating a relationship with those people because the way that Google Plus works and the way that any social network works, right, is when you add somebody to um, your circles, generally they, well, so in Google Plus, they get a little notification that says, um, you know, somebody, you know, Mike just added you to um, his circles. Well, in, in most cases, those people are now going to add you back, right? They're going to put you in their circles. So now you've got this two-way communication going that is really, really powerful. So what an easy way to find the prospects that you're looking for, right? Just super, super powerful. So let me show you some other things, right? So one of the most powerful strategies that you can take advantage of is you can see who is following your competition and key influencers. So let's just say that there is somebody in my marketplace who's the big brand, you know, that everybody already knows, they've got a huge business, they're doing really, really well, and I'm trying to chase those guys down. Now what I can do is I can go to their Google Plus page and on their Google Plus page, I can actually see a list of all of the people that are following them. And I can go through that list and I can add them to my own circles. Right here, so that's what I did. I created a circle that says following the competition. And I can go to my competition and I can see the list of people who are following them and I can go through and follow them and add them to my circles. So how powerful is that? Somebody else, your big competitor, has already gone and spent all of this marketing power to get all of these people to know them, but now you can go and just pluck all of those people and add them to your own list in Google+. This is an amazing way to build your list fast and start being able to reach out with the audiences that your competitors have already aggregated. I hope that makes sense to you because it's just such a super, super powerful way to use Google Plus to prospect and to build your list, okay? All right, so number six here, keep your ear to the ground, okay? Once you've, once you've identified these prospects, you wanna listen, what are they talking about, right? 
because the easiest way to engage with them is to engage in the conversation that's already in their mind, right? That's a, that's a famous marketing lesson that says engage in the conversation that's already in their mind. So if your competition, or excuse me, your audience is already talking about, um, you know, let's just say uh, they're talking about some major news event that happened in their industry, the easiest way for you to connect with them is to start talking about that major event that happened in their industry, but put your own unique twist on it, right? Because it, it doesn't really benefit you if all, of your, all you're doing is just repeating the same information. But if you share your perspective on it, right? If, if you add your own twist to the conversation, now you will start finding that you're getting more and more of those people engaged with you. So you wanna listen, and when I say listen, I, w I mean that you want to you know, get out there on Google Plus and see what those people are talking about and engage in that conversation. Now, to engage them, there's a few strategies that are really critical, right? One is to plus one their content. The plus one button is, is, is kind of like that currency on Google Plus, right? When somebody's put out some content that you think is relevant and you plus one it, you're essentially voting for that content. So people are looking to get more plus ones. So by doing that, there's gonna be an increased likelihood that they're going to see who you are and engage with you, right? Commenting on their content, obviously, right? By, by engaging in that conversation, commenting on their content is a great way to uh, you know, create some dialogue with them. And then of course, sharing their content with other people certainly after you've already commented on it or by adding a comment as you share it is a great way, again, to engage those prospects and start creating a conversation. All right, number eight, once you've got that conversation going, you wanna make some sort of call to action. Now, what's important is that you only do this after you've had some engagement with them, okay? The last thing that you wanna do on a social network is just hammer somebody with offers and calls to action because they feel like, hey, you're not actually being social, you're just trying to sell me, okay? So you don't wanna do that. You want, you, you want to have calls to action, of course, but only after you've created some engagement. So once you have created some engagement, though, it's important that you work some sort of call to action into your marketing because you know, just having all of these relationships doesn't do any good if you can't take them to, or you can't get them to take action that's gonna generate you some new business. So you may wanna send them over to your website or maybe you've created a specific landing page with some offers on it or the ability to opt in to join your email list or maybe there's some um, you know, cool information or presentations or something like that that you can offer them to download for free. These are you know, strategies that you'll see all over the web that you can now take advantage of with your new relationships and your lists inside of Google+. So here's an offer, you know, <clears throat> it's, it's great if you can make them an offer they can't refuse, right? This is from the brand Timbuktu, um, which makes a lot of cool bags and things like that. Well, what they did to get people, you know, um, interested in their brand and engaged in their brand is they gave away this summer park kit, right? And it's for a week in July, you know, they're giving you the opportunity to win it. It's $552 worth of stuff. And they just got, you know, all this fun stuff that you can win. So if you're somebody that's you know interested in these types of products and you're interested in their brand, well, what a fantastic way to get people really engaged with you and um, you know get them to uh, you know en engage with your brand, share your content with other people, um, things like that. And I know that this this particular campaign was super super successful for Timbuktu. So you know just think through, okay, what are the interesting offers? What how can I make them an offer that they can't refuse? Right? That that the ideal prospect that my ideal prospect is just gonna find so compelling that they're really gonna want to engage with me to take advantage of it. All right, number nine, record your progress. You know, people talk all the time um, about whether or not you know, social media sites are just a waste of time or if there's actually you know, some good productive business value. Well, I'm a big believer that you don't know unless you measure, right? But you know, what I have found is that social media sites such as Facebook and Google Plus and LinkedIn do have incredible business value if you know how to uh, take advantage of the right strategies. So you've got to measure what you're doing 
to make sure that what you're doing is working and that you're actually getting value from those strategies. So, you know, we suggest in Google Plus that every Friday you measure who's added you to um, their circles, uh, who's plus one your comments, and who shared your comments, right? So those are good indicators that what you're doing is getting out into the Google Plus universe and getting more and more exposure for you and your brand. Um, a, a cool way to see this visually that Google Plus uh, has is what's called ripples. Ripples are pretty darn neat. Anytime you create a post that you publicly share, so that means that you share with everyone, right? Versus, again, in Google Plus, you don't have to share with everyone. You can share just with very specific audiences. But when you share something very publicly and you want to see, hey, how did that piece of content do, right? How, did it make its way around the Google universe? Did it get shared with a lot of people? Well, there, um, anytime you, you post a piece of public content, there's a little drop down arrow in the upper right of that post and you pull it down and there's a, a little thing in there that says, you know, to view your ripples. Well, the ripples are just a visual representation of how that public post got shared throughout the Google universe, right? Who, who took a look at it? Who shared it with their circles? How big those circles are, right? So it's a, it's a pretty interesting way to see the effectiveness of, um, of a particular post within Google+. All right, number 10, spread the word, okay? Once you've got that Google+, Plus page built out and you start creating some community and you've got some content on there, you wanna spread the word, right? So there's a few ways that you can do this um, that, are, that are really cool. So badges, hangouts, and sparks, um, you know, badges are essentially those little buttons that you can put all over the place that essentially say, you know, follow us on Google+. Hangouts are a way to engage people on um, Google+, in, in essentially like a little webinar format or video, you know, chat format. And Sparks are a great way to get additional detail um, uh, or additional information about a particular topic. So let's say that you're very interested in entrepreneurship. You can um, put in entrepreneurship in your Sparks and what Google is going to do is share with you all the content that it's finding related to entrepreneurship out there on the web. And then that makes it very easy for you to find pieces of content to share with other people. Okay, so these are three very good ways to spread the word about Google+. And let me just show you here. So Google Plus badges, you've probably seen these all over the place, right? Just this little we're on Google Plus thing. And um, you, know, you can put this on your website, you can put it all over the place. And when people click on it, they can automatically add you to their circles. So you definitely wanna have these um, all over the web. Uh, just you know, helps people easily engage with you on Google Plus. Next is the Google Plus Hangouts. Um, Conan O'Brien here does a real good job of um, chit-chatting with his fans. Um, Google Plus Hangouts are, are really neat. They're changing all the time. It seems like Google's really experimenting with these, but let me just tell you what they are. So essentially, you can turn on your webcam on your computer, and you can start this quick video hangout with other people on their webcams. So you can, you can get up to 10 people um, in, in this virtual video chat where you can talk back and forth live um, using your video cameras. It's, it's, it's really, really neat. And what Google has started to do is, is expand the capabilities of this. So even though it's only 10 people in the Hangout, these are now automatically being broadcast live on YouTube. So anybody could watch the Hangout live on YouTube. So, you know, Super, super neat way to engage with people. Like I said, you can see somebody like Conan O'Brien using this as a way to informally engage with his fans off of his TV show, right? To create new connections and, and make people feel really engaged. Well, you could do this with customers. You could do this with prospects. Um, you know, just really, really neat ways to use Google Hangouts. So next there's uh, Sparks as well. So Sparks, again, is an um, interesting way to find information on a particular topic. I know, you know, so in social media, a lot of people struggle with, well, how do I find interesting content to share with people to, to make sure that I'm, you know, engaging with people regularly in a way that's going to be interesting to them? Well, in Sparks, you can 
um, you, you, can, you can add these interests, right? You can add the things that are interesting to you and interesting to your marketplace. And once you do, you'll be able to see a link to each of them under your profile picture. And anytime you want to see what's going on in the world related to that interest, you just click on it and you're going to get a page filled up with news and posts and information about that particular interest. So it's a great way to find content and find out what's happening and related to that particular interest and then be able to share that with other people in your Google universe. Okay, so that's it. I hope that you found these tips uh, helpful for you. And I hope that this was an eye opener for you about how you can use Google Plus effectively to build up some prospecting lists and start engaging with those lists. It, it's really just super, super easy. It's like, it's like Google took all of the lessons of Facebook being out there for five years or so and said, okay, what do we like about Facebook? What don't we like? You know, what are people's complaints? And they created a brand new version that has all of the best stuff and takes away the worst stuff. So it really, really is a powerful platform. Um, let me go ahead and uh, I'm just going to take another drink of water here and then I'll answer some of these questions that have come in. All right, first question comes from Jim. He says, we already put a lot of time into Facebook marketing. Why not just focus there? You know, that's a great question, Jim. And, you know, without knowing the details of your business and who you're going after, that, that may be the right thing to do. You may just want to focus on Facebook. Um, you know, I'm not saying that everybody should be marketing on Facebook aggressively, marketing on Google Plus aggressively, marketing on LinkedIn aggressively. It totally depends on your audience. I mean, if you're selling um, kids' toys, then Facebook is probably going to be by far and away more effective for you than Google Plus. Um, but, you know, Google Plus has a lot of advantages for a lot of businesses and for uh, just a lot of professionals in terms of networking and engaging with new people. I mean, Google Plus has made it very, very easy to, um, to engage with people, um, you know, even, even more easy than Facebook, um, even easier than Facebook. So, you know, it, it may not be right for you. It may not be, depending on the resources that you have at your business, it may not be worthwhile for you to, to spread yourself too thin. But that's only something I can answer for you specifically based on, you know, digging in a little bit into your business and, and what resources you have and getting a good understanding of that. Uh, let's see here. Sarah asks, how does Google Plus's audience compare to Facebook and LinkedIn? That's a great question. Um, so I think that if you ask... Um, if you ask most people who are in Google Plus on a regular basis, they'll tell you that Facebook is where people go to just kind of goof off and post pictures about their pets and um, talk about you know what they did last night you know and things like that. LinkedIn is on the far opposite of the spectrum, where it's all about professional. It's all about you know having a, a, the right professional image and you know all that type of stuff. Google Plus, I would say, is someplace in between those two. You don't find people on Google Plus typically, um, you know, just goofing off about their pets and their baby pictures and all that type of stuff. Uh, but at the same time, it's more approachable, certainly, than LinkedIn. I mean, LinkedIn, you know, you're technically not supposed to engage with somebody unless you've already had some sort of relationship in the real world with them. Um, Google Plus does not have those barriers. It's, it's much more social than LinkedIn is. So it, it's kind of someplace in between. And that's why I said I think a lot of people find that this is a very attractive middle ground. Like Google found, okay, what do we not like about LinkedIn? What do we not like about Facebook? And they, they kind of solve the problem. Um, so it, it's interesting. It's, it's an audience that's in between those two properties, in between uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. And again, I think the best way to really understand it is just get in there uh, for a little while and, and play around with it. Let's see here. Um, Mike asks, uh, or Mike says, I feel like every time I'm in there, something has moved or disappeared. <laughs> Am I imagining things? Um, no, that's definitely true. I mean, Google is certainly changing uh, Google Plus on the fly as they learn 
uh, what's working and what's not, uh, which I really admire. I mean, they're, they're being very aggressive about getting feedback and then making changes to improve it. Um, but yeah, it can feel like, man, I just, I just figured something out and now all of a sudden that button is gone and, and, you know, has disappeared on me. Um, so yeah, you have to keep up with it a little bit, but I would say that there's real benefit to doing that now, right? Um, there are a lot of things that I think if you get in early that you can take advantage of that, um, you probably will not be able to 12 months from now because Google will probably have refined some things and tightened some things down and stuff like that. Um, so now, you know, I think if you can jump in there now and get a little bit of an advantage, a head start on the rest of the crowd, I think it can really benefit, uh, benefit you. Let's see here. Mark asks, uh, is Google Plus big enough to make a real impact for our business? Yeah, I mean, Google Plus, so Google Plus is up now, you know, 170 million registered users and growing quickly. I mean, I think that Google Plus is actually... Um, other than, you know, maybe like uh, Pinterest and, um, you know, some of the other photo sharing sites, I think it's the fastest growing social site out there. You know, because Google has a lot of real advantages to get, you know, people connected in there fast, right? I mean, they've already got, I don't know, how many hundreds of millions of Google Plus users, I mean, uh, Google Mail users, Gmail users. So, you know, and they've got people on their search engines all day, every day. So they've made it very easy for you to create your Google Plus profile and, and get engaged in Google Plus specifically. So, you know, I think that um, uh, it certainly is big enough and it's growing very, very quickly. So again, you know, depending on the business you're in, some businesses are going to get more impact out of this than others, but uh, certainly worthwhile to dig in there and check it out. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and get you guys moving now. Um, we've been on here for just about an hour, and I want to be respectful of your time. Um, I do have some more questions that came in, but uh, I will follow up with you directly, or somebody from my team will follow up with you directly here just in the next 24 hours or so, okay? Um, I do appreciate all of your time and attention, and I just want to say that, you know, this is what we do for a living. We help businesses uh, take advantage of online marketing such as Google+, Plus, such as Facebook, things like that, to, uh, to help them grow their business. And if this is something that you feel like you could use some help with in either developing or executing a strategy, or maybe evaluating what you've been currently doing if it's not quite working out for you, then we'd love to hear from you. So no hard sales pitch here or anything, but you know there's our contact information right here um, surrounding this presentation. And if, uh, if you feel like you could use some help in this area, We'd love to just have a conversation and see if there's a good fit to, uh, to potentially work with you. Okay? So thank you very much again for your time and attention. I really appreciate it. And I'll let you get back to your day. Um, but certainly, dig into Google Plus and see if there's a way that you can take advantage of it at your business. I'm almost sure that there is. All right? Take care.